Hi everyone, welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. My name is Sammy and on this channel, we do DIYs, we do wood signs, and there is tons of laughter here. Um, I have been getting new subscribers lately, so thank you guys for subscribing. I thought this would be a great opportunity to put all of my current spring DIYs into one video so you could binge watch away. I like watching uh, mega videos while crafting, so hopefully you do as well. I also wanted to take a minute and say thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. And with that said, let's go ahead and get into the DIYs. All right, you guys, we are starting off with one of these beware signs from the Dollar Tree, some brown shipment paper, because y'all know I like covering up the back of my signs. So I'm just gonna lay that down. We're gonna trace it out like we usually do, and then we will proceed to cut it out and glue it on the back of the signs. I love doing this because I love a finished uh, looking product, and I don't wanna take the time to scrape all of that stuff off. So taking a craft knife, we're gonna go ahead and just clean it up. Then I am taking chiffon uh, by Rust-Oleum and we're just giving that a messy brush on here. We, we don't need it to look perfect. And then here comes the decal. I got this at Dollar Tree quite some time ago. Thought I would have to use Mod Podge on the back, but I didn't. It was super sticky. So then I'm just gonna go ahead and press that down and then I grab my Mod Podge and just kinda sprinkle that over our decal. And then we're gonna go ahead and rub that in with a brush. Now I just put a light amount of um, Mod Podge on here because I just wanted to make sure that it didn't pill up or anything as time went by. And then you're gonna go ahead and let that dry. And then we are going to move on to distressing. So I added more chiffon paint just to, I wanted to blend that decal in. So I just got my stencil brush from Dollar Tree and kind of went over it. I even went over the decal itself with like the remaining product on the brush. And then I grab my, um, what do you call that? Antique Wax by Waverly. And we're gonna go ahead and distress this down. And then I move, I was trying to hide the decal, but it kind of defined it a little bit, but that's okay because it still ended up being perfect. So let's clean up our space with our little ladybug. Now we're gonna go ahead and take twine. I'm gonna wrap that around four times. I was trying to cover the holes on here. So if you are gonna do that, just make sure you use hot glue in a few places because as you get towards the edge, it starts kind of falling off there. So I'm gonna wrap four times on each side. Then I'm grabbing these flowers. I don't know, these are from like Walmart, Hobby Lobby. I've had them forever. And we are just going to make a little arrangement with some hot glue on the bottom right corner. I debated putting some in the top left, but seriously, it it was enough. And you guys, all of these today are gonna be so quick and easy. You are going to love them, I promise. And I kept changing my mind because my favorites kept changing and this for sure, has become my favorite one. And I cannot wait to take down my Valentine's Day decor already and decorate for spring. So yeah, mama had, I gotta have a drink. It was the weekend. Uh, so look at how beautiful this looks. It is fresh. It is so spring and farmhouse and it reminds me of sunshine and being outside. I cannot wait for those days here in Kansas. Let me know what you guys think about it down below. And if you've ever seen this decal before, all right, y'all, that was the first DIY. I hope you're excited about the like other 1819 to come after this one. I was really, really vibing, uh, still am vibing spring and Easter decor. This is my first year doing them. So I have just went absolutely ham with everything that I've created. Make sure you comment down below, what is your favorite? And for those of you that don't know, again, my name is Sammy. Check me down in the description box. I have a TikTok, I have Instagram. We also have a Unicorn Desk Designs Facebook group where we share our DIYs ask questions and have some fun. So y'all know if you're digging me, if you're digging the DIYs, if you're digging the channel, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe and also make sure to stick around because I'm going to be telling you more about Skillshare later in the video. Let's get on with it. Y'all, this is another favorite. So these are quick, you guys. This is a grapevine wreath. I got a bunch of random florals and the grapevine wreath is from Dollar Tree. And what's awesome is it kind of was in the shape of a Easter egg. 
So just with random florals I had, I went ahead and what's great about Grapevine Reese is they're so tightly like bounded together that all I had to do is take the stems of the flowers and I just kind of shimmy them in between the branches or the twine that's tying it all together. So with these, these are peonies. I did get them on Amazon. There's like, they come in like a huge little bundle for $10. I'll make sure to link them in my description box. And I knew I had another one. And oh, how lucky was I that it was a contrasting color. Did the same thing, just stuck it in the branches. There you go. Seriously, that's all I did. Stick it in the branches, put a couple dabs of hot glue. Sorry, I'm not in frame on the stems just to added security. And then I'm going to take some of this baby's breath as well. And again, I just put it through the branches or maybe this one I did the twine. I'm not sure. And then watch, I'll show you as it I get it in there. That one was tough, but like, it's not going anywhere. These things are in there. See how it's through there. Cut the rest of that stem off, put a little bit of more glue. And now I'm going to take my, this is like a plaque from Dollar Tree, taking the chiffon rustoleum again. And we are just gonna do a messy, messy coat. I, I don't think I ever do clean coats. These are all gonna be messy coats. Then with the same brush, I did not clean it. I'm going in with my antique Waverly wax and I'm just putting it right on those corners, on all the edges. And this just adds so much dimension to this piece. I love it. All right, then taking some decals that I made on my Cricut and how awesome was it that I had the most perfect color vinyl. I have no idea what color this is, y'all. It was in my stash, but I was lucky. So I decided to print out Hello Spring and gosh, this just turned out so great. I'm happy with all of these. Look at it, love it. And like I said, simple. All I'm gonna do is take that plaque and I'm going to, of course, I'm not in frame. Sorry, I'm trying out a new angle. Let me know how you guys like this angle. All I did was put hot glue wherever the plaque touched the wreath. And that's it, y'all. That's it. Can we say gorgeous? Like, hello, spring. Yes, you're welcome in my home anytime. Because this looks so high end. Like, yeah. I love it. I just love it. All right, you guys, Skillshare. What is Skillshare? Skillshare is an online learning community with over thousands of classes such as marketing. They have stuff for music, fine art, web development, crafts. And for me right now, I am taking an interior design basics class by Lauren Cox because you all know I just moved into my new home and I could definitely learn a thing or two about the setup. So I love this because you can do it at your own pace. The class that I'm currently taking is about an hour and 45 minutes. And I like that I can break it up into, you know, watching it in my morning coffee or at my lunch break or whatever it may be. And you know, with an annual membership of only $10 a month, it is so worth it to educate yourself and to learn something new, especially when we're all at home a little more often right now, it's definitely worth it. So the first thousand people to click the link in my description box will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. So make sure to go down in my description box and click that link. All right, this one's easy peasy, Dollar Tree squeezy. Legit the easiest thing, okay? So I got this frame. We are reusing it. I used it at a baby shower. Take it all apart. And then we're gonna grab Blush Pink by Rust-Oleum. All of my paints are by Rust-Oleum today. And I am doing one coat all over this frame. And I decided on one coat because this frame has so much texture and detail in it that I wanted those to pop through without having to distress it and do all of that. So just one coat of this, make sure to get inside the frame as well, because you will see it when you put your picture in. And then y'all, I did something. I made my first, first principle for y'all, okay? So make sure to clean the glass before you put the principle in and make sure your glass is dry. And look at this is gonna be available to you guys. I was so excited and proud of myself for making one. So just taking the back of the frame, we're gonna go ahead and trace this out so that it fits perfectly. Once we trace and we cut, you're gonna go ahead and stick that principle in your frame and you are 
and done. This can go, y'all, in a wreath. You can put it on a table like I am going to do. And look at the detail in the frame alone. Look at how amazing that looks. And then fresh flower market seeds, stems, blooms. It's just gorgeous and that. All right, our next DIY, y'all, is an eight by eight piece of wood. I'm using Serenity Blue by Rust-Oleum. Of course, messy brush with a chip brush. That is how I roll with everything I paint. Yeah, I don't think I paint anything nice and neat. So you're gonna do the front, the back, the sides. Then I'm attaching a sawtooth hanger, which you technically don't have to do depending on where you want it because this actually stands up all by itself. So that is up to you if you wanna put a hanger on the back. So now taking a baby glass jar, y'all, I have tons of these from when my babies were babies and that was four years ago. That's how long I hold on to stuff. Okay, so I am just tying that around. We're gonna do a classic little bow on this and now we are gonna attach it to our wood sign. So I'm gonna take some super glue from Dollar Tree. It is comparable to E6000 and I love it. And then we're gonna surround that super glue with hot glue. So the hot glue is gonna give us that immediate hold. Super glue is gonna give us that long-term hold that we need. Then I'm gonna take a stencil. You could also use rub-ons. You can use the word uh, wood cutouts from Dollar Tree. You can use your own penmanship, carbon paper, so many other options other than vinyl. So I did Be Humble. Now I'm taking these beautiful mini roses from Dollar Tree putting those inside and you have this beautiful, bright and airy spring decor piece. And imagine with little different sayings and if you were to do like the chiffon color, the blue and the pink and putting them up on the wall next to each other, it would look so absolutely gorgeous. Moving right along. Here, this box is so haggard, y'all. I tried to take off the, the paper and it didn't work so well, but that's okay because I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. So we're taking burnt umber here, and I am going to put this all over this box. This is just a Dollar Tree box that had, I don't know, a pumpkin on it or something. And I'm making sure to get the sides and the top, and I do do two coats on the side just because I didn't know what I wanted to do yet. Now taking the Crackle Medium by Folk Art, do not do what I just did, okay? Put it in a bowl and brush it on that way. Make sure to get all of your sides, all of the fronts, and then we are gonna use our heat gun. Now the heat gun actually helps it crackle even more. And I learned that from a subscriber when I first started my channel, so thank you. And now taking a contrasting color, we are taking, um, I think this is Vintage White by Folk Art in their acrylic paint. And then we're gonna paint over. And y'all, you have to use acrylic paint, at least that's what the bottle of the Crackle Medium says. And I have tried it with chalk paint and it has never worked for me. So you will already see right here that crackle start coming through and it is absolutely gorgeous. I want to do this with real wood and like sell some of them because I was so impressed and you could see, see that squiggle mark from what I did with the crackle medium. That's why I say, don't do that. Put it in a bowl and brush it on. And this is also why you need contrasting colors because if I would have used cream on cream, it wouldn't look as cool as it does now. So taking some burlap ribbon, you could get this size at Walmart and I actually found a bunch at Dollar Tree this summer. I'm gonna cut the seams off the sides here and then I'm gonna fray it just a little bit. And then I'm gonna attach it with some hot glue. Now put just a small, small bead of hot glue and then as you'll see, I just kind of tap it, just tap it. I don't want all that hot glue coming up through the burlap, we don't want it looking all nasty. And then I decided to just put some dots. So just dot, 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 tap it, rub your finger over it. You don't want a lot because then it'll come through and then you'll have a cloudy white mess on top of your burlap. All right, you guys, next. One of my subscribers, and I'm so sorry, I should have wrote your name down before. Um, in my YouTube or in my Facebook group, she posted one of these flowers. So what you do is you take your burlap and then I am just getting pliers and I'm taking out the middle of this and I'm leaving like three, three strands on each side. Now I'm going to fold this over here. Okay. And we glued it, folded it over. And then we are going to start rolling this up and then you're going to glue it kind of in the middle 
and at the ends. And then we are going to kind of clean it up. So make sure you guys join that Unicorn Dust Designs group because people show inspiration all the time. And I was so inspired by her piece that I knew I had to try and recreate it. So I'll leave you the link down in the description box of the YouTuber that she referred me to to make this. So as you can see, it starts looking like a flower. All I had to do was press it down. And then it was like, I wanted to secure it in the middle and then on the outside of it as well. And it was a little too, I don't want, I don't want to say, uh, it was too like high on the back like it was poking off of the frame so at first I start with a little bit then I put it on the frame let's see how much it pops out so I cut even more off the back and it stayed together perfectly fine and then I found the cutest I don't know where I got this flower thing from but I found it in my bead stash put it inside the flower and how adorable does that look so then I just go ahead and get some hot glue. We're gonna glue that to the corner of our sign here. Easy peasy, Dollar Tree squeezy. And then we are gonna go ahead and get this little clip. I think I got this from Joanne's last summer. Put some antique wax on it. We're gonna hot glue that straight to our sign. And that is going to be the end. I guess I wanted to show you guys me drying that up. Okay, so hot glue, apply it to your little sign. And this is, oh, I just love it. Look at that crackle. Look at how aged and perfect and with the burlap and the bird, it's, oh, and that flower, thank you so much for showing it to me because it's gonna be one of my new favorite things to do. All right, we are gonna go ahead and move on to some more DIYs. So this is, these are just the planters from Dollar Tree. They come in a two pack for a dollar. And I'm just doing a base coat of chiffon by Rust-Oleum because we are using tissue paper and I didn't want the like terracotta color to come through. So you're gonna repeat that for both of them. And then after we are done and those dry up, which they dry super fast, I'm gonna take this Dollar Tree um, tissue paper and we're gonna cut some squares out and the squares were already there for me. So I just cut those out. And then I'm gonna get this Mod, Mod Podge. And this is the squeezy one from Dollar Tree and I love it because it's so convenient to have at your crafter's table. Now, as you can see, I pat down on the tissue paper. If you were to rub it with your hands, it would tear so easily because it's so thin. So I highly recommend going little by little, thin coat of Mod Podge, pat it down and you're just going to follow that all the way around your pot and you want to make sure to get really good on where you're going to connect your seams so you'll see i do that overlap them and then i'm going to cut that excess off and then i accidentally ripped the top because i started rubbing yes so don't do that okay but that's okay it's an easy fix just put some more tissue paper on there we're gonna let both of these dry. I just did the same exact thing for the second pot here. And then you guys, sorry, I didn't record it, but I just cut the excess off the top in the bottom of the tissue paper and then put some more Mod Podge on the top and the bottom to secure that down. And now we are going to be adding some super cute florals. So I could get these from Walmart and I call them baby eucalyptus. I don't think they're called baby eucalyptus, but yes, I got these and then I got these pink. They almost look like baby's breath. I don't know what they're called. I should have probably looked at the tag. And I'm gonna just add those just for that little pop of pink to tie in, of course, the pots and all the other decor that I am making in this video. And these turned out so adorable. These would look great in a tear tray. They would be cute on like hung up with some twine. I just love how fresh and clean and bright these look and I can't wait to see if they fit actually in my tiered tray because these are gorda. Whoa, let's keep going you guys. All right, these are the little galvanized signs from Dollar Tree and you don't have to rip them off. 
you just have to unscrew them. They unscrew and then that whole wood piece actually comes off. There are holes that are left in it. So I just wanted to show you that so you know. And then I'm just gonna take off that. And then we are just going to apply Rust-Oleum Chiffon in a messy brush with my chip brush. Then I'm doing the same thing with the antique wax. And this is just gonna give it that rusty old look, which I love. And then we're gonna let that dry. And we are going to get, these are also from Walmart. I believe I got these on clearance during the summertime. And I'm gonna bundle these together. And then we're gonna go ahead and grab the uh, twine. And I go ahead, just tie a knot around it first. I don't know why I was all complicated and wrapping it around and it was falling apart. Just tie a knot, then wrap it around, okay? All right, then we're gonna go ahead and cut these, the bottom of the stems off. I hot glue it to our galvanized sign but then I realize that the holes are still showing. So I get another two stems and I'm able to push this one through the twine, but this one was giving me a little difficulty. So it kind of broke off, which is fine because hot glue to the rescue, just douse it with some hot glue and you're good to go. And that's how easy this DIY was. And the same thing, if you made multiples of these and hung them up together, they would look so gorgeous. Or even just putting the floral arrangement like on a wood sign and putting a quote next to it. There's so many things that you can do with all of these pieces. And I love the way it turned out. So next DIY, taking a shadow box. You're gonna go ahead, we're gonna deconstruct all of this stuff. And then we're gonna take are, uh, what do you call it? This is like a scraper. I got these from Dollar Tree and they came in a four pack. Absolutely love them. They're um, little razor blades and you can, you know, put them back in safety wise. I don't know what I'm saying. Okay, I know everybody is gonna say you can use acetone to remove this. It does not work for me. I have tried it with 100% acetone and it never works. So I just go straight to what I know works for sure. And it's just taking a razor blade to the letterings and letterings and scraping it off. All right, now with the Rust-Oleum Serenity Blue, I'm gonna go ahead and do two coats of this to the outside and then the inside of the piece that is to the right. Now I highly recommend just going ahead and painting the inside of the frame on the one that I was, I'm holding now, because when you put it all back together, you still see some of the black. So taking the backing now, I, it was wood, but I wanted a darker wood so that our decal would pop off of it. So I go ahead and get my scrapbook paper. We're going to take our jumbo glue stick, attach that to the backing. Love the jumbo glue stick. It is so much better than having to deal with Mod Podge for things like this that are so easy, you know? Then I just attaching my uh, vinyl decal. I did get this off the Cricut uh, Access Studio. I love the saying, I just had to use it. Do I show it? I think I do. It says where flowers bloom, so does hope. So taking more of the little mini flowers, we're gonna go ahead and kind of put the back back, put the backing back on. So right here. And then I'm just gonna throw some of the florals in there just to gauge how many I wanted. Snap that back together and you are done. I told y'all these DIYs are so easy. Okay, it's not done. I added antique wax, which I wasn't going to, but my paint started shipping already. So I was like, you know what? Let's just distress this baby. Let's, let, let's make her look like her brothers and sisters, you know? So I went ahead and did that and I'm so glad I did because it looks so good with that wood backing on there that everything happens for a reason. So this is how she came out and look at with that wood and the flowers, it just looks so rustic and natural. And that saying, it just, oh gets to my heart for sure. I love it. Where flowers bloom, so does hope. I love it. All right, man, I'm running out of breath over here, y'all. Okay. We are going to take these wood. They're not planks. I know. Why do I forget? Anyways, we're taking four of these from the Dollar Tree and we are going to start 
building a box basically. So I'm just putting hot glue on these slats. Do not put it all the way down on the wood because then you're gonna have hot glue coming out everywhere, which we don't want. So make sure we're getting parchment paper so it doesn't stick to our mat. Just hot gluing it, hot, hot, hot glue. Attach your wood. There you go. We got our box. How? Easy peasy Dollar Tree squeezy was that. Then taking our blush pink again, we are gonna go ahead and paint the entire box. However, I do not paint the inside of it. I don't like painting the insides usually of my crafts because I feel like it just adds more dimension and helps it pop a little bit more. Now we are in our Antique Wax by Waverly and I'm doing an amazing job at showing you what I'm doing, obviously, but all I'm doing is starting from the edges and pulling that antique wax inwards just to give it a little bit more dimension. I thought it looked a little too plain, just pink. Then I'm gonna take these gold thumbtacks from Dollar Tree. Now I pushed these in and hammered them in. If you don't wanna go through all of that, you can simply take your wire cutters, cut off the actual tack part and then hot glue these on to your board. So again, I apologize you guys, these aren't in frame. Uh, I'm trying a new angle. But again, let me know what you think about the angle. Let me know which one is your favorite project as well. But look at how cool. So as you guys notice, I didn't put a bottom on it. And the reason being is because I wanted you to be able to just like kind of put it over things, stuff more things in there. And I love the way that this turned out. It is so super chic. I love just the whole arrangement I did in it. So beautiful. All right, you guys, I think this is our last one. So taking a bamboo cutting board, I cleaned it with alcohol, hoping my decal would stick to it a little bit more, but I still had some issues with this decal sticking to it. I mean, it wasn't bad, but I did create this on my Cameo myself. So it just says spring is in the air, use a little mason jar. Do you guys know where we're going with this one? So easy. Now taking Mod Podge, I am just putting a very light coat just to make sure this vinyl doesn't come up. Even though it's permanent, it wasn't really adhering the way I wanted it to to our bamboo board. So go ahead and let that dry. Then taking some felt flowers, I got these at Joann's on clearance a long time ago and never used them. The backings on the flowers themselves are already kind of like dried up, so I had to hot glue them all down. But just playing around with placement, you're then just gonna take some hot glue, put your felt flowers on. You could use paper flowers. You can use like the fake flowers from Dollar Tree. So many possibilities. Make paper flowers with your cutting machines. And that's it for the front. Then I just got some twine, hot glued it onto the back of her, one on each side, and easy peasy Dollar Tree squeezy, y'all. I can't believe how easy these were, and I hope you guys really, really enjoyed them today. Thank you for visiting my channel. If you are here from Heidi Sambles page, I truly appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch and uh, to listen to me. <laughs> so remember you guys, if you like and you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give a thumbs up and to subscribe. All right, you guys, for those of you YouTubers or somebody wanting to start a YouTube channel, I am hosting a new monthly challenge called Try It Tuesday, where you can recreate at least three DIYs that you love from another crafter. Uh, you must give them credit for it. It is going to be every last Tuesday of the month, and I will be putting this in my community tab so you can really see the rules and guidelines for this video. So I hope to be seeing you on this challenge. It will be starting the last Tuesday of February. So put it on your calendars. I hope to see what inspires you guys to recreate because I know I can't wait to try out some of y'all's DIYs and give you guys shout outs on my page. Starting off, we're gonna take these wooden birdhouses. These come in a lot of different styles, so make sure you take a look at them. 
<laughs> at them. I got them in three different styles and I am taking a bunch of textured stickers from Dollar Tree. We have these which I've used on previous projects and then we also are going to be using some circular puffy stickers. So for these, I am going to be adding them only to the roofs of the houses. So for this one, I'm gonna do it in the front and the back and of course remember you guys this is just inspiration you could add as much bling on here as you want now this ends up getting scrapped later i'll show you what we do with the roof of that house so for this one we're getting the small circular puffy stickers and i'm going to put seven on the top shingle and then six on the bottom shingle and then we're going to repeat that step for the opposite side. Now these do not need any additional adhesive. They stay put once you press them down firmly. Absolutely love these as you can see. <laughs> All right, so now painting. I am using Rust-Oleum's Blush Pink serenity blue and chiffon for all of these projects today and essentially all of the bodies of our houses are going to be opposite colors the base is opposite colors the roofs opposite colors so i am not going to put you through the torture of watching me paint every single house because I think you guys get the concept of painting here. But just be careful when you are painting because since we are using contrasting colors, you don't want um, your lines all messy. So I do a single coat of paint on like the bases and the body of the houses, but on the top of the houses, on the roofs, I'm gonna do two coats of paint so that I can try and cover up as much of the color on these stickers as possible. So this is the second one where I said we're going to scrap that later because it looked so weird that all of the other houses had texture on them and then this one didn't have it on the roof. So we're going to put some of these bigger puffy stickers. Now these you guys just lightly place them on there. That way you can move them around and then when you for sure know that that's where you want to stick them then press firmly and then they will not go anywhere. So after that, we're gonna go ahead and continue on painting. Pink, oh, oh, slobber. Puppy pad to the rescue, see? Multiple uses, <laughs> he's so cute. Okay, so now taking some mineral chalk paint by Waverly and our new favorite plaid chip brush. The link is down in the description box for you. I am gonna distress the, the roofs of the houses. Now, this is my preference. Some of the color in those stickers were still peeking through, so I thought this would be a great way to kind of blend it. And also, as you guys know, I love to mention, I think it makes the uh, stickers pop a little bit more on the roofs, and I think the mineral color was like, just what it needed. I was almost gonna do antique wax, but so glad I stuck with that color. So now we are going to take the chiffon chalk paint and I am gonna use this, um, it's my Apple Barrel Synthetic Brush. These come in like a three pack at Walmart for I think $4. And I love using this paintbrush when I am painting on glass. It is very smooth and I don't know, it's just easier to apply for me. So we are gonna paint three of these candlesticks. One is larger than the other two. I didn't know they came in three sizes. And we are going to do two coats of paint on all of these. And then taking my stencil brush from the Dollar Tree and that mineral chalk paint again, we are going to distress it down. Now I know distressing isn't for everybody, so just take these and use them as inspiration. And what's nice about these, I always say it in these like spring videos, these can be any color. So they can be everyday decor if you just change up the colors. And that way, you know, if, if you're not into the spring vibes or the colors I'm using, just change it up. So now taking the birdhouses, we're gonna take the Fix It All Super Glue, it is my favorite, and then hot glue. So for those of you newbies out there crafting, we use the super glue for longevity and we use the hot glue for that immediate hold so that your houses aren't gonna be moving around on you. So we're gonna repeat that with the last one and then we are going to add just a little something else because of course I couldn't leave them by the 
I couldn't leave it alone. So I'm going to be doing a finger bow. I'll attach this video down in the description box for you and up in the cards. And I am just making a two loop finger bow and we are going, I tried it a couple different places, but decided we're going to put it on the little perch right here. And I think it just added just so it wasn't so plain Jane, you know, it just added that little extra that it needed to be super, I don't know, look at how cute these are. I, I love these. They're already out in our home on a shelf and they came out so great. I hope you guys love these. Comment down with a heart um, if you loved these little houses. Next up, we are taking this, um, they're the plastic plates from the spring collection that are out right now, and they actually come in a pack of five. So these are beautiful to use as a plate, or we can decorate it, which we're gonna do. So I'm just taking the smaller puffy circular stickers, and we're gonna put that in all of the scallops, then taking that chiffon chalk paint and just a chip brush, we are gonna go around the front and we are gonna put it on the back. Why are we putting it on the back? One, your girl has to have a finished product. Like it has to be finished looking. I want it to look like you went and bought this out of store. And two, this is gonna be on like one of those little uh, plate stands. So you're gonna see the back of it. So then again, taking this mineral, we are gonna distress that down get those scalloped edges popping up and those stickers. Oh, looks beautiful love this brush then taking some scrapbook paper i do not know where this scrapbook paper came from it has been in my stash for a long time so we are going to trace out our bunny that bunny is from dollar tree get our jumbo glue stick my favorite and then we're going to go ahead and put that scrapbook paper on i just love how vintage this looks with all the handwriting on there it's gorgeous then taking our craft knife by Arteza, we are gonna go ahead and clean that bunny up so we don't have a bunch of overlapping paper. Easy peasy, Dollar Tree squeezy, you know? Okay, let's, there we go. Oh, this is mama getting crazy because we ordered some things off Wayfair, saved our hard earned money to buy brand new stuff and they came without screws, they came without instructions and my husband's like, you're better at that, you do it. <laughs> So anyways, we are going to go ahead and this is just popsicle sticks that I'm cutting up and layering on top of each other with a hot glue gun so that we can use it as a riser behind the bunny. Now I didn't want the bunny popping up too far. That's why I didn't use one of those like the wooden cubes from Dollar Tree. I created my own. We're going to attach that to the back of our bunny and then we're going to glue our bunny on to our plate. There we go. Now taking some Spanish moss, also from Dollar Tree. If you guys don't like getting dirty, don't use this because it gets everywhere and yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not neat to work with. So this bunny was just raised just a little bit. So it was nice because I was able just to stick this underneath the bunny without any adhesive and it has totally stayed put. But if you are gifting this to somebody or selling them, then I would recommend putting a little bit of hot glue or adhesive back there just so it doesn't go anywhere but it was tight enough where it didn't move on me so we're just going to follow this all the way around and then we're going to go ahead and clean this up just so you could still see like the scalloped edges of the plates also so you can still see the shape of our bunny here so after that is done here she is absolutely gorgeous and I can't wait to use these plates on so so much more and you guys head over to my Instagram it's down in the description box because y'all just need to see how I just decorated the house using the all description the box all right you guys we're gonna take these wood blocks and thank you Leona for sending me me these and this is that Minecraft, Minecraft, mine game thing. And I wanted to point out that there's holes that go straight through and then there's holes in it that only go through these two sides. So make sure to look out for that. 
then taking skewers and some foam blocks, I am going to attempt to paint these. Now, I know a lot of you are cringing, but my favorite way to paint beads for like a beaded garland is on a wire with spray paint. However, I do not have these colors in spray paint. So some of you suggested the skewer method. So th this was my take on the skewer method and all I'm doing is brushing them up and down and it does a good, I mean, after I got the hang of it, it, it was pretty good. So we are going to do four of these in chiffon, four in blush pink, four in serenity blue. And I do do two coats on all of the beads, dry them off. We're gonna go ahead and set those to the side. Now taking that same scrapbook paper I tried to get a corner that had more details in it and a little bit more color, I guess you could say. Taking our glue stick again, we're gonna go ahead and put that scrapbook paper right on there, press firmly down, and it will not go anywhere. All right, so taking this mineral chalk paint, I am just brushing it on the edges just so it looks a little bit more worn and with the scrapbook paper. All right, so slowing it down for you, we're gonna make a tassel. So I am wrapping this around, this is I think uh, my scraper tool, but you can use four fingers, you could use anything you want. And you're gonna wrap it until you get the thickness you want. Then we're gonna take it off, you're gonna grab a smaller piece of twine, and we are going to double knot that around our loop, leaving longer on the bottom, and then like a smaller loop on top. So you're going to cut the bottom piece, the longer half, in half, and that's gonna be like your tassels. And now we have our loop right here. That's our small loop. That's where we're going to feed the twine. Here we go, feeding that in there. I'm going to double knot this up for you guys. There we go. And this is now going to become our twine that we're gonna feed our beads onto. So cut a good amount. I didn't know how long this was gonna be. It was way too long. And then I'm taking some painter's tape, wrapping it around that end so I could easily put these beads through. Now, right away, as I start this, I'm like, whoa, these are way too bright for this scrapbook paper. Like, they need to be distressed. They need to look dirty because they just were not going. So, we're gonna finish this up and then I'll show you what we do, which is, I'm pretty sure you guys know what we do. <laughs> so we're gonna double knot this to our little egg here. And then, and then, what did I take? Mineral. <laughs> and we're gonna just put that on top of our beads. I focused a lot on that first pink bead um, just so it didn't look so bright. And this totally completed the look. I mean, it tied everything in, it tied it into the scrapbook paper. I was so excited. Now I know I've made beaded garlands before you guys, but this was with a different method of not actually using the beads. So I hope you enjoyed this DIY because I think it turned out absolutely beautiful. Aww. All right, our last one, you guys, this one is so easy. Again, if you guys don't like to paint, then you probably didn't like this video <laughs> because it's a lot of painting. So taking these glass containers from Dollar Tree, I they did come in a lot of colors. I purchased the clear because I knew I was gonna paint these. So I'm just taking a chip brush. We're gonna paint all around this. We're gonna get that silver part as well. And then we are gonna wait until they thoroughly dry with our heat gun then taking our mineral again we are distressing it now i know distressing like i've said isn't for everybody but i really think it adds that texture it makes these little ridges pop up off of the container and that's just my preference so again you do you you know what i say okay if you guys are loving kind of like this shabby chic look, give me a thumbs up so I know to do more of them for you. All right, taking some of the floral foam, we're gonna just stick all that in there. And then taking our scrap skewers that skewers that we used earlier, I'm gonna take my dog clippers. You could get these at the Dollar Tree. And then that burlap pot, you guys, I don't know where I got this from, but I used my Cricut to cut out these birds and I did use it on the burlap fabric setting, just so you know if you have one. And we are just gonna hot glue these right onto our skewers. I didn't 
paint the skewers or anything like that. And now I was trying to figure out, do I want them staggered? Do I want them the same? I don't know, but I think I made one just a little bit taller. So then taking some more Spanish moss, we're just gonna go ahead and stuff those in the bottom of our bases here. And that is it. Like I've said, easy peasy, Dollar Tree squeezy. I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed these farmhouse spring decor ideas. I hope it inspires you to create something of your own. Make sure to check my description box down below for Kristen's link along with our Facebook group link. All right, y'all, so you know how I keep like everything? Well, this is actually the cover to a light fixture. Um, most people would call it what you say a booby light. Yeah, we took this off of the ceiling that leads into my craft room. And of course, the crafter in me was like, I know I could do something. So uh, I'm doing something. So all I did was paint it in linen white by Rust Oleum. And now I am just taking my um, antique wax in Waverly, and we're going to go ahead and distress this down. And Although you're not going to see like the bottom really, it still adds a lot to it. So now I'm going to go super fast, y'all, because I am taking, it's called sizal rope. And this is actually different than nautical rope. You can get it at, at like Home Depot, Menards, any of those places. And it's a lot thicker, hairier. It has more texture and stuff going on in it. And I thought it would be perfect, not only for a decorative bowl, y'all, but a bird's nest. Yes, a bird's nest. So right here, I am just going all the way on top of it, covering all of that glass. And I had the perfect, perfect amount of rope for this project. It was amazing you guys and it was just so easy to make this was the one that i was like last ditch effort i was like oh i want one more project in here and it ended up being my absolute favorite so now i'm just adding some spanish moss to it and what's great is that this can be a decorative bowl all season long or you can do like what I did right here and put it into a little nest. You could put a bird in there, some eggs. I mean, y'all, the possibilities are endless. Comment with a flower down below if you are digging this DIY. So for those of you that have Instagram, you probably remember me hauling this from my local thrift store. This little girl bunny was $2.99 and I had to paint it. It was a pretty pink, but it so reminded me of like the 90s, you know, like the glassware and the plates that had the little like blue heart on it with like the pink flowers on the side. That is what this reminded me of. So we needed to bring it into 2021. So I'm taking my Waverly chalk brush and I got these at Walmart and it came in a two pack and they were less than $11 for the two. And you'll see next Tuesday, all also use it and I love it because it's helping me get into all the little grooves and texture of this bunny it had like these little raised bumps all over it so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna coat this entire bunny with the linen white I do do two coats because it definitely needed it now taking that antique wax again and my Dollar Tree stencil brush I am just dabbing it all over I want this girl to look like she was hanging out with Peter Rabbit in the garden i want i want to bring all of like the outside elements in with these projects and this bunny totally does it for me and you know you guys start off with a little bit here okay you could always add more wax later and then i'm going to go ahead and add some twine and i'm just making it thick enough where you can see that it's there you know and we're going to get some hot glue taper that off wrap it around one more time then taking these beautiful paper flowers I got from Hobby Lobby a while ago, I'm gonna go ahead and bring some more pink back into her life. Okay, we had to add that pink in there. And she is complete. And y'all, okay, check her out. Now, this bunny looks like she would be um, in like a pottery barn catalog. I, I mean, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but toot toot. Like, she does okay okay 
All right, taking these, I found these at a garage sale for 25 cents each, and I actually got all four prints. I looked these up on eBay, and they were selling for $100 for the four. But y'all, they meant way more to me as craft pieces because some of them, not all of them were 100. Some like were like $10 and something like that. So I just decided to craft with them. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and clean these up. Do y'all remember seeing these like in the kitchen and stuff? Okay, anyways. So I'm gonna coat this with burnt umber and I'm going to put, paint both of them in this color, getting the sides as well. And we're gonna do two coats. That's what it looks like after two coats. We're gonna go ahead and let that dry. And then we're gonna come in with painter's tape. Now y'all, this is such an easy, easy project. I get it, but I wanted to show you how easy it is to create a high-end framed sign without having to use any wood. So we are creating with this painter's tape a faux frame for our signs we're going to make. And it's as easy as just taking painter's tape, however thick you want it. You can even like overlap them. You could put multiple layers to get multiple lines on here. I just thought it was worth sharing with y'all that like don't, you know, cut wood and all that stuff. It comes out amazing. So after we're done with that, I am taking my linen white chalk paint again and I'm using my foam roller. We're gonna go ahead and put some even coats, make sure not to get outside of your painter's tape like your girl did. And we're gonna go ahead and do two coats of this. And then look at those crisp lines. Now I did bring up a little bit, but don't worry. We are gonna doctor that up. We're just gonna get a paintbrush, get that burnt umber, and we are completely fine there. But look at how crisp these lines look. Look at how clean this looks. Like it already looks like it's framed out. It's absolutely insane. So now I'm gonna go ahead and clean up my white marks that I decided to get everywhere. Girl, you should have known that. Okay, now you guys, I made these all on my own on Cricut. So um, for those of you that have a Cricut maker, I will link or try to, and I swear it never works for me, the image down the, you know what I'm talking about, the files down below. And then for those of you that don't, I will have these on my Etsy shop, give me until Monday and I will have them posted there for you. Um, I love the way that these designs turned out, pat myself on the back again, and I'm just using 651 permanent vinyl for this, and that is vinyl ease. All of this stuff you can find down in the description box in my Amazon store link, and I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process for our other sign as well, and these turn, mama has to get, get a snack, <laughs> hello. And these turn out so beautiful. Look at these. Come on. Do these not look like they wouldn't be sold at Hobby Lobby or Michael's or somewhere else? And that framed look is every, like, it looks so clean and yes. Okay. So I had this burlap stocking and it had a hole in it. So I had never used it. And then I decided, you know what? we can turn this into something. So I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling it apart. And then I realized I'm gonna have to flip this inside out because no matter what I do, I'm gonna have to glue this close. So I flip it inside out. So get those Christmas decorations out, you guys. Let's start making bags out of them. Okay, and then I'm gonna cut the foot part out. Keep that because we can use that later down the road because you know we use everything in this craft channel. So taking my hot glue gun, we are going to just go ahead and glue, glue, glue that closed. This is just regular hot glue. I'm not using fabric glue or anything. And then we're going to go ahead and turn that back, back outside, inside out. You know what I'm talking about here. And, and we are going to take our Arteza uh, fabric markers. And I cannot say enough good things about these markers. They are so pigmented and they work on everything. You guys know burlap is, is kind of hard to like write on and get a very vibrant color off of. These do the job. And you guys, I'm not gonna fast forward through this because I was really, really impressed with my handwriting today. I mean, I have good penmanship usually on like a piece of paper, but whenever I try to craft and use my penmanship, it always turns out super janky. So I was really impressed with myself. Gosh, I'm just full of myself in this video, aren't I? Jeez, you guys, I'm sorry. 
no, I'm not. This is my channel and I, I'll, I'll give myself credit where credit is due. Okay. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay. No, I'm not. All right. Anyways. So we're going to go ahead and finish this off. And then I was just going to be like, okay, that's it. You're done. But then I decided, you know what? I need to show you guys how to decorate this. So as I'm thinking about it, I guess right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. So I'm just taking, this is like a pasta sauce jar and I'm gonna put that in our bag. So one, it stands up. Two, so this, this Spanish moss will have something to kind of like sit on top of. Then we're taking all of our little carrots from Dollar Tree and we're putting all of those in there because this bunny is hungry and we wanna catch this thing. So we need all the carrots we can get. This would be so cute too to do with your kids and like leave out the like night before Easter or something. I just thought it was so adorable and how easy, how easy was that? And you could do this with anything really, even like a wine bag, that would be a good idea too. So you guys, I would leave a carrot. Is there a carrot emoji down below if you like it? Okay, so um, I didn't think YouTube would appreciate me showing these little naked bodies. So I covered that up, got this at a garage sale for a dollar. We're going to take this Rust-Oleum hammered uh, stuff and spray it all over. And yeah, girl has no patience. So this is definitely uh, tacky the entire time I'm working on it. <laughs> so taking painter sticks, we're going to go ahead and lay these out. We're going to take four of them. And after you get them in the position you want, I'm going to go ahead and get a pencil and kind of mark out kind of like the outline of this plate or tray or whatever it is. And then we're gonna take our, what do you call this, table saw. But you guys, I'm not gonna show you all this because it gets super sketch over here. So just, just know I'm using this and that's how I cut the painter sticks, okay? So then we take the a baby wipe and our antique Waverly wax. We're gonna go ahead and put that all over our wood pieces here. Easy, easy, let me tell you. And it dries so quickly. The coverage is great, the color is great. So we're gonna do that with all four pieces. And then once those are dry, we're gonna go ahead and lay those back out on top just to check our placement. Now, to be honest, I would have left it just like this. I thought it looked rustic. I, I loved it, but I kind of went ham with the hot glue here and it kind of like pushed out the sides and then I knew I had to cover it up. So we're gonna go ahead and hot glue the rest of them on. Don't get ham with the hot glue, okay? And then after we're done with that, we're gonna take this nautical rope from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna go ahead and stick it behind the first panel, making sure not to go too far down because you don't wanna see it through the slats. Now. For this first piece of rope, I am trying to keep it on the edge of the tray. That way I could define that line of the tray here. So I'm not, I'm trying not to touch the wood pieces, as you can see, which I ended up, I don't know how, it still ended up going flat. I don't know, you guys, but you get what I'm saying, you know? All right, so we're gonna bring this back up. Now you guys, this nautical rope, totally unravels so easy after you cut it. So what I always do is I take hot glue and put it in between there, twist it back up tight for a second, and then it doesn't unravel on you. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick that underneath there, glue it off, and then we are going to do a, another strand of this. Now for this strand, make sure you get on top of your wood pieces. And as we get to the bottom, Okay, make sure you're putting the hot glue on the rope and not the tray because if you put it on the tray and then try to like press it down, it's going to go down in there and then it's just going to look wonky and uneven and we don't need all that happening. So we're going to bring this back up and then do the same thing, tuck it in. And here is Hank. And this is a long session with Hank right here. He is um, my lover. Not, not like that, like he's my lover dog. Like he loves to cuddle, he loves to be around. He will hang out downstairs with me all day if he doesn't hear something going on in the backyard. And I know you guys love him to death. Somebody actually suggested doing like a once a month live with Hank where you guys can ask questions about him, hang out with him. And I was like, do people really love him that much? If you guys really, 
really adore him, then comment down with a, a doggy emoji. He would appreciate it. I know he would. Look at him, my sugars. Give me some sugars. Then he was like, all right, mom, I'm out. So now I'm taking more of this Spanish moss. I'm gonna go ahead and stuff that down all the way down in there. That way, that's all you see through the slats that we put in. And then I'm gonna add a little bit more so you can see it out the top. Now this is where you guys have fun with it. Put whatever you want in there. I chose to do these dried flowers by um, from Dollar Tree. I just thought it went with the whole vibe I was going with for these DIYs. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish those up with some stems. And I do use two packs of these. Um, and here we go. Now, you guys, this didn't turn out exactly how I imagined in my mind, but it didn't come out bad either. I really wish I wouldn't have gone all ham with the hot glue because I actually preferred it without the rope. What do you guys think? So with this one, we're gonna start off with this plastic egg from Dollar Tree. And I didn't want to bore you because this took three coats to cover with Rust-Oleum's chiffon paint. Now I'm going to be taking, um, this is Elephant by Waverly, and we are going to do the splatter effect. Now, yes, I know there are cleaner ways of doing this, but your girl does not mind getting a little dirty here. So I'm just taking this stencil brush from Dollar Tree, using my finger to brush through the little bristles on here. And just keep in mind, the more paint you put on that brush, the more splatter effect you are going to get with this egg. So after we're done with that, we are going to go ahead and dress this girl up and we're grabbing the burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree and we're connecting it to the bottom. Now I love that this egg had a flat base for us because it, it just looks so good when you set it out for decor. We're going to cut that out and then we're going to grab a piece of lace and this lace fit perfectly and we're gonna go ahead and add that the bottom is not gonna show so it doesn't matter if it connects or not then after that he of course your girl has to add some more and some more okay so taking these little they're paper flowers from Hobby Lobby I got on clearance and I'm gonna glue those on and then uh, if you guys don't know me, I'm like guacamole. I'm extra too, okay? And so I just have to keep going. I can't stop. So I add these paper flowers and then I'm like, oh my gosh, I have pearls from Dollar Tree. So let's add some pearls in here. So I grab my box and we have big pearls and we have the small pearls from Dollar Tree. So then I start just kind of putting them wherever I think look great. This is what's fun about like the shabby chic. Like you could add as much or as little as you like and I just couldn't stop. So I'm gonna add the pearls on here and then I see little diamond pieces at the corner of my eye and then I'm like, oh man, I gotta add these too. They're just so pretty. And if you're a bling baby, you add that bling, okay? just. Just add as much as you want. I loved the addition. It kind of like pulled everything going down the sides with these diamonds, kind of pulled everything back into the middle to focus on the flowers. And I absolutely love the way this came out. And y'all, if you wanna see how I actually like um, style these in my home as decor, make sure you go head over to my Instagram account. The link is down in the description box because I will take pictures of how I place them in my home for you guys to see. And this huge speckled egg came out so gorgeous. I have it styled with some books on one of our new um, tables and it's gorgeous. All right. So moving on, we're going to take this Christmas tree. Yes, Christmas tree. And we're going to take all of this garland stuff off. Now, as I removed it, I was like, you know what? It's black. It's perfect. Like it looks like wire to me. So I'm going to grab this jute cord. I will have this in my Amazon store link. It is a little bit smaller and softer than what you would find at Dollar Tree, but it is more expensive. So I'm going to wrap this around. Now, if you like neat, then definitely do your rows, but I am just wrapping this around like super messy. I want it to be rustic, shabby, and I like that the black is showing through because it looks like a metal frame is underneath this jute. It doesn't look like it's plastic, so it was totally okay with me. So 
As you saw, I put some glue down at the bottom and I'm just putting glue up top here and it's been holding perfectly fine. We're gonna cut that remainder off. There you go, easy peasy, Dollar Tree Squeeze. All right, so then I grab the same jute. We're gonna go ahead and tie some, I, I guess a handle on here. Um, you don't even have to use a handle. You could have this like laying down on a table with stuff like coming out of it and that would look cute. Okay, now taking a book, you guys know I love books. This was already damaged, so I felt okay doing this. Uh, but I'm going to freehand cut some petals out of these book pages, and then I'm gonna cut a little slit down the middle. Not all the way up, just a little tiny one. And what you're gonna do is you are going to take your petals, you're gonna place a little bit of hot glue on one of the tabs and then you're overlapping the pieces together. Then taking a skewer, I am just rolling those petals back so they have a little bit more texture, they look a little bit more lifelike and not so straight, <laughs> I guess you can say. Um, and we are gonna continue doing this for all of the petals. Now, I did this freehand, but you can find templates on Google for free. Your Cricut also actually has templates that you can cut, and you can use paper, newspaper, cardstock, whatever it may be. So after our petals are done, we're gonna cut a strip, and I'm just cutting little slits all throughout this piece, and this is what's gonna become the middle of our flower. Then I'm just going to start rolling this up. Now this had a few like layers of paper, so it kind of got a little messy, but you could also use pearls in the middle if you want. You could um, roll some jute up. Now it, does, it didn't look like much, but see you just kind of fan it out and then it starts looking a little bit more full. So then we're going to take another piece of our paper. You're gonna cut a little circle and this is going to be the base of our paper flower. So we are gonna start hot gluing these to the base. And as you hot glue each one on, you're going to overlap them just a tad bit. And don't go like halfway, just a tad, like at the very end of that previous petal, that's where you're gonna set the other petal on. I hope I'm making sense here. So we are going to carry all of those petals around and you can make your petals different sizes too so that it's bigger on the outside, smaller on the inside. I didn't do that. I just used these extra two petals, made it look a little bit more full inside. And then we're gonna go ahead and hot glue our middle in here. And then I'll fluff it up too, just so it looks a little bit more full. There you go. And now we have ourselves a beautiful paper flower. And that's just gonna help add a little bit more detail for when we style our basket. Now I'm just taking some pages and you guys, I'm just shredding it. It's not anything, it's not a wow factor by any means, but we're just gonna shred these and then I'm just gonna show you how I ended up styling this and putting it together. Oh, so I, <laughs> do you see this? This is what happens when you apply too much heat to these plastic eggs, okay? <laughs> I painted these with the serenity blue did double coats and as I was drying it I was like why are these get it why did this get so big yeah it bubbles up so this is how it turned out I absolutely love the addition of the blue eggs that pop the detail of the paper flower and you can change this seasonally as well which is great because you get to repurpose this DIY which I absolutely love so this next DIY, we are going to be taking the antique and then the mineral chalk paint from Waverly. And we're gonna be doing the same thing that we did for that milk jug, which I'll leave the link up in the cards and down in the description box for you. We're gonna mix those together and taking this Waverly chalk paint brush, I'll leave the link down in the description box. I am basically like stippling this, is stippling a word? basically pouncing it up and down, up and down, making sure that it is blend. And then you're gonna continue it all the way around the back. Now I added tons of antique wax to it and for the rusted look, this looks amazing. It looks phenomenal, but I wanted just a little bit more of that gray in there. So we are gonna go back and add just a little bit. So make sure you blend this very well. You don't want it to look like polka dots or like, remember like the 90s, you know, paint jobs on like 
the walls. Yeah, no, we don't want that. So make sure you just blend it in. Now I'm taking this image I got from Google and uh, I'll try and link it down in the description box for you. So what I did here was I basically just set it in our morning coffee. The coffee wasn't hot or anything. I just let it sit for five minutes in the coffee and now I'm just drying it with my heat gun. You could also put it in the oven at your lowest setting for about five minutes, making sure to check on it, okay? And now you have yourself this nice, colored vintage looking paper instead of a stark white piece of paper. So I'm going to go ahead and tear all the edges off of this here just to not make it look so neat. You know, I thought about cutting the bunny completely like out of it, but I wanted this more to look kind of like a, a label versus a cutout image. So I wanted it wrinkly. Now I'm taking some Mod Podge and I'm just gonna brush that on the back. I didn't want a bunch of Mod Podge on the outside and this ended up just working great. Just the Mod Podge, I rubbed it on there, perfect. I will say I did spray Rust-Oleum Matte Spray Paint after I was done with this next step because it was starting to kind of flake off. So this is just our leftover paint and I'm just getting the sides and brushing it on there just to get it all together. And then this is Hanky. He wanted love. It is freezing in my basement. I don't have any, um, the vents don't travel down here. So I have like a little standalone heater, but it was nice to have him come give me some cuddles today. That's all he wanted. Somebody said I should make uh, Hank some pins and like try and sell them and donate a portion to an animal shelter, which may be a great idea. All right, so taking this burlap, I actually got a bunch of this from Dollar Tree during the summer. You could also get it at Walmart. And what I'm doing is I'm taking that thicker uh, seam of this burlap here and I am hot gluing it to the rim of the planter. Now, if you noticed, I did paint the top of this because it did show through. I thought I was gonna kind of like double layer this, but decided against it. So you do have to paint the entire bucket here. So going around, we are going to uh, finish this off. And then I'm gonna tuck it in. Uh, you guys, I don't even think I told you, this is a Dollar Tree planter bucket, the ones that are like wrapped in twine around the top. I don't think I said that before. This is from Dollar Tree, so you guys know. So then I just tuck that remainder burlap in. I'm gonna hot glue that the two seams together, press it towards the back so it's kind of attached to the planter as well. And that is it. That is it for this Dollar Tree um, planter and it turned out gorgeous. I already put it up in my house. This, I don't know. I don't know if this one's my favorite or the big egg is. I am not sure which one's your guys' favorite. I just love how this turned out and it's doing that like paint color is my new favorite. Okay, so this one is super easy. So taking these eggs from Dollar Tree, I'm gonna take a puffy paint marker. This is from Arteza. And I am going to be just doing a bunch of like intricate designs on them. I wanted them, of course, to look shabby chic. So for this one, I'm just doing some like stems, putting some leaves. They're all going different angles. And uh, I, I, I'm by no means an artist, y'all. So, I mean, you can do it, start off simple and then work your way to a little bit more detail. But I'm gonna go ahead and finish this one up and then we're gonna let them dry so the puff paint can thicken up. I do not do the backs of them. I like, look, if you mess up, you just wipe it off. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so you do have to let them thicken up. Now I'm going to just um, show you a couple more. So this one I decided to go around with a straight line. Then we're gonna go ahead and add some scallops to this one. Now, if you can see, I'm using my pinky finger to just stabilize my hands. We're gonna travel around. I'm gonna add a couple polka dots here. I also get my heat gun and just kind of speed up the process just a little bit. So this one became my favorite. And you, I do fill the entire front of this one up, but you can just stop halfway and that looks gorgeous too. But these are like swirly doodads, I don't know. 
And then for this one, I did a flower, just kind of like half of a flower. And then we're gonna do kind of like the petals floating off of it. Then we're gonna set them all aside. Like I said, we are going to let these dry up and then we're gonna come back with Rust-Oleum Pink Blush. Now I decided to paint all of them in this pink. You could do you and do any color you want. I do wanna mention that one had to do two coats and two that when you get over by the puff paint go a little lighter on the paint because the paint kind of wants to settle in all of those little cracks and then you can't see the details as much so go light and i just had to show you this one i know you guys know how to paint but it just was so stinking beautiful i'm obsessed with this one i probably would have done all of them like this if i would have seen the outcome of this one so again, two coats of paint. Then we're gonna take that extra paint we had before, our stencil brush from Dollar Tree, and we're just going to de-stress all of these. This just makes all of that like puff paint and that texture just pop out at you so you really see it. And it's those small details to me that make something that is Dollar Tree look so high end and well put together. So I love the way these turned out. Please make sure to tell me which ones are your favorite and make sure you guys, if you're digging me, if you're digging the channel, if you're digging the DIYs, to make sure to subscribe and like. Head down to the description box too so you can check out our Unicorn Dust Designs Facebook group. I'm on Instagram and uh, yeah, I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere. So my favorite DIY first. So taking nautical rope from Dollar Tree, uh, went through like three pairs of scissors to finally get this to cut, but we are just cutting the tape off the end. Then I'm gonna go ahead and grab some hot glue, finger protector, and I always put hot glue in between the like rope and then I will twist it up tight. That way it holds together and it doesn't unravel on you and it always seems to do the trick. So taking our hot glue gun, I am just gonna start rolling this into itself. And at first I'm trying to do this like up in the air, just holding it. And then I'm like, girl, uh, you have your mat there, your silicone mat there for a reason, use it. So then I get smart and I bring it down to the silicone mat. So when I am wrapping this, I am getting the hot glue and I am stringing the bead of glue at the very bottom of the nautical rope and then kind of almost like dragging it into there. That way the hot glue doesn't come out on the top because that'll look nasty. So you're gonna, you're gonna spin this around as full as you want it. Um, I just kind of eyeballed how big I wanted these and then I just make sure to hot glue the end and then look at all that hot glue on the bottom. No, thank you. So now I'm just measuring out my bunny ears. So make these as big as you want, as little as you want. And then I make sure just to cut as many pieces for the ears as you're going to make bunnies. Does that make sense? So again, hot gluing the ends so that they don't unravel on us. And then we're gonna get a hot glue. Again, a lot of hot glue. And I'm gonna put the hot glue towards the back of this nautical rope gonna push it in there and then I'm just gonna get a little little baby dab of hot glue on the front of that ear it's hardly noticeable and I just press my finger into it just so I know that it's secured on both sides now right here I highly recommend cutting them and getting them as flat as possible at the end so that they sit flush with your bunny head so I'm gonna repeat that step for the second ear. Again, just hot gluing the ends so we don't have unraveling and attaching those to the back. And I, oh gosh, these came out so cute. So you guys know I need a finished product, right? The hot glue mess that was on the back was just way too much. So I started it this way, but I'm gonna hop to the second bunny I did because it was just way easier, okay? So look. Before I did the ears on this one, I put hot glue on it, lay it down on my burlap. I just kind of dab it. You don't need to press hard because you the whole purpose is to cover the hot glue, not push it through your burlap. And then I cut around it and this just makes it look clean. It makes it look finished. 
and you all know I love finished. So this, you guys, is the same thing we're doing. So attaching ears to this one. Oh, Everett, he loves the color. Um, so we're going to finish the ears and now we're going to accessorize them. So this is some um, ribbon that I got from Michael's, 70% off. I just applied that hot glue to the back of the ear, laid it on the ribbon, and then we're just cutting right around it. This was so much easier than trying to trace around the ribbon, then cut it out, then lay it on. This just <clears throat> worked. It was easy peasy, you guys. These are so cute. I wanna like make a million of them and sell them, I swear. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. So then taking a strand of this, I'm gonna take the wire out, cut it a little thinner, and we're gonna make a finger bow. I will attach that video down below for you. It is in real time and much easier to follow. And then we are going to hot glue this to the bottom of our bunny as a little necktie. Oh gosh, these are so adorable. These are like my favorite, favorite, favorite. Okay, so then for the second one, I took a Dollar Tree doily and we are gonna use this for her little ears. So again, I'm just going to apply hot glue to the back of the ear and then just lay it on there. It's on my silicone mat, so that's good. And then I'm just going to cut around this. Now for her, which I wasn't thinking clearly, when we make her bow, I put it down on the neckline like I did for the little boy bunny, which I wish I would have just done it up top to make it like look like a hair bow. But anyways, nonetheless, they still came out super, super cute. So again, I just took a piece of that doily, making a finger bow. It kind of looks like it's falling apart, but that's totally fine with me because it looks rustic and primitive and oh, I'm in love with you bunnies. Oh my gosh. Let me know down in comments if you are going to be trying this. You guys, this only took one of the eight foot nautical ropes at Dollar Tree. I think it's eight foot. I don't know what it is, but only one of those bundles. And look at how adorable these two came out. I am obsessed. I feel like I need to sell these on Etsy or something. They're just, oh, they're so cute. All right, you guys, we are starting with these carrot wood cutouts from Dollar Tree. I am just taking a baby wipe and then we are rubbing some antique wax on. These are actually going to be the back. You guys know I love a finished product, so that's what I decided to do. So now taking this ribbon I got from Michaels, I want to cover the carrots in this ribbon, but it wouldn't carry the entire top part. So I'm cutting pieces out, take that um, metal out the wire, and then I am coating it with some hot glue and I'm gonna lay it right on top of that ribbon so I know it co covers it. And then I'm just lightly patting it. We don't want it to go through the ribbon here. So then I'm just gonna cut out around here. I'm going to cut this top part off because as you can see, it doesn't cover the entire top of the carrot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another piece. We're going to lay it horizontally and you can see right there. Well, I ended up getting another piece, but if you cut this piece in half, it's the perfect size and you could use one piece for two carrots. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay this on top. Make sure you take that wire out. It just makes it a lot easier to cut around the carrot. Now I'm gonna take some scissors and we are going to cut around there so we see obviously the top of the carrot. Now y'all, if you have recommendations for like detail scissors, please let me know because one, these you can tell is like ginormous. And then these little ones that I got from Dollar Tree, they only cut like on the very back of the blade. So it was really hard getting like in the like corners of this, but yeah, your girl made it work, you know? So we're gonna go ahead and finish that off. And then we're gonna repeat this for all four, of, I end up doing four of these carrots here. So again, I'm gonna show you one more time, take all of the wire out put some hot glue, just put it around the rim and put very, like very light amount. And as you can see, like I dab my fingers on it because I don't want all that hot glue coming up through our ribbon. So we're gonna go ahead and finish this one up. Don't worry about the harsh like black line in between that because we are going to cover that on up. I'm just fast forwarding this, you guys, okay? All right, okay. So after we're done with that, we're taking twine. You're gonna wrap this around four times, tack it off in the back, 
voila. And you are going to continue to do that for all four of your carrots. Easy peasy, Dollar Tree squeezy, right? I love how this garland turned out. This is my first time making one, so uh, I don't think I did that bad of a job. All right, after those are all done, we are going to take some painter's tape and about three inch pieces of twine, I would say. And I am putting painter's tape on the bottom so we could get it through the hole on the top of the carrot. So there we go. Sorry, Hank's barking up a storm in the backyard. And since this was my first time making one, I didn't know if you were supposed to tie them like super tight on the twine or loose. I decided to give it just like a little space. So I double knotted it, left a little bit of room. That way I could still move it around and play around with the placement after I was done putting all the other ribbons on. And I go ahead and just cut the ends off. It's okay if they're sticking up. And then I'm gonna repeat this step. I'm gonna do it one more time for y'all. It's pretty easy. Uh, and I'm just using my weeding tool to stick the hole back into it. So weeding that through, tying it on, double knotting it nice and loose. Now, after I'm done with all four of those, I tie the ends in a loop just so we could tack it, you can hang it, you can do whatever you want with it. And next I'm gonna grab some of this burlap I'm also going to grab our ribbon and some of the doily from our first project. And this is what's fun about garlands because you can make it however you want. You could put as much as you want, as less as you want. Possibilities are endless and that's why I enjoyed making this. So for mine, I did the burlap. Then I got the ribbon. Make sure you take the wire out of it so it's more flexible on these sides here. And I end up using, I think eight pieces total of the ribbon and I love that they got the straight lines right there for you girl yes ma'am all right so then taking uh, the doilies from Dollar Tree come in two packs so this was the second one and I'm just cutting this in strips then then I get smarter and get my rotary blade from Dollar Tree that thing is awesome pick one up so I'm going to take the doily and I'm going to tie it on each side of our burlap and I don't care that it looks almost like it's falling apart because I want it to look rustic and old like you would see it in like an antique shop or something. And I then take the ribbon, tie that on each side of the doily, and we're going to repeat this step all the way through even on the right and left side of the end carrots. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm like telling you guys, oh, you guys need to add some like orange to it. Well, you will see. I did end up adding a very like thin ribbon of orange and I think this turned out so well. For some reason they seem to kind of like blend in right here but on my window you can perfectly see that these are carrots and I love how rustic kind of like primitive they look. It definitely stole my heart for sure. Okay, for this one, we are taking a new sign. Don't, y'all don't gotta get sassy with me, okay? I know it's new, people are looking for it, but it was the perfect size, and so I had to use it. And by the way, that welcome comes off very easy. It's just that like foamy word stuff. Okay, so take your twine out. We're gonna go ahead and flip this baby around, get some burnt umber. I realized I didn't have any brown chalk paint. Y'all know I hardly ever used acrylic paints. It's all chalk paint for me, but I didn't have brown. And this worked very well. You don't have to worry about covering the whole thing up. This literally took me like 10 minutes. This is gonna be such a fun project for y'all to do as like a girl's night in, a family night with your kids. It was so easy. Okay, so now taking some plaster by Waverly, I'm just taking a stencil brush from Dollar Tree and I am just going for this bunny. So basically, I'm not good at explaining how I paint. I'm not Bob Ross, but, um, this was so easy. It's basically like half a big circle, half a small circle, and then long triangles that slant on one side. Yeah, I'm not good at explaining painting, but as you can see, this was very easy to do. I promise you can do it. And I'm not being neat by any means. I am going through and just dragging this brush just roughly because I did want it. I didn't want it to be pure white or anything. And then I'm gonna get some antique wax and just put like a little, little baby amount. That way I can cre create some shadows in our little bunny. And you can see right there, 
like how much dimension just the little shadows add. And then it helps um, us create a line in between the ears so you really know that there's, you know, definition in there. I absolutely love how this turned out and I was really impressed how fast I did it. So now taking some ribbon, this is from Michaels. I'm gonna create a loop. I think this is about 10 inches long. I'm gonna hot glue the ends together. And then I always press in the middle and fold it in half so I know my um, middle point. And I'm folding it up and over. I will leave my bow tutorial down in the description box for you. Cutting some dovetails there. And y'all, I don't even like hot glue this together or anything. I get a piece of twine that was left over from another DIY project that was sitting on my table. And you are just going to loop it around and then we will hot glue it down at the very end. So here you go, hot glue it down. And then I did the bow first because I wanted to be able to see the position it was on its the bunny's neck for me to draw, paint the face on. So after we're done with that, we're gonna grab, <laughs> you guys know I don't throw anything away, right? I was about to throw these makeup brushes away and I was like, oh girl, no you are not. These are like synthetic makeup brushes and you could use these for painting. So that's what I did. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw some eyes on. I'm using Folk Art Rich Black. Then taking some pink from Folk Art as well. This is also chalk paint, doing a little nose. Now it does get darker as it dries. I then take, the, this is like a detailed brush from Dollar Tree and I'm going to paint, I don't know what these are. Is this his mouth? I guess the, the bridge of his nose, the bottom of his, I don't know. And whiskers. You could even put some pink in the middle of its ears. And oh, so cute. Now y'all, I am starting to learn as I craft, let me tell you, because you guys know I like to finish the backs of my signs. Well, I was noticing I would do that first and then I would be getting paint on the back of it. So this time I was like, you know what, let's wait, do it at the end. So as usual, I take my brown shipping paper, I start tracing it out and then I cut it. And you guys always know that like this stuff like rolls up on you when you're trying to like cut it perfectly. So I cut it like that and then I'm like, no, don't cut it, don't cut it girlfriend. Like hot glue it, put a bigger piece, you know, right there. We're gonna finish hot gluing this up. Then we're gonna take our Arteza craft knife and then go around and clean it up. And this was just so much easier than fighting the brown shipping paper that curls up on you to try and cut it perfectly. Like now I know this perfectly fits the back of my sign. So I just wanted to show you that because it looked so nice. Look at that. Okay. Woo -woo. Okay. Now poking some holes in, we're going to put our twine back in. And then this is when I notice. I'm like, uh, that ear looks a little funny. So I grab some more burnt umber and I clean up the sides. I do go back in and clean up the middle of his ear as well but I absolutely love how this turned out I really really challenge you guys to, to do this with your friends and your family I think it would be such a fun way seeing how everybody's bunny turns out how everybody does their faces picks their bows I think it would be a lot of fun look at how cute you are mister looking all rustic and handsome I love it Guys, I wanted to take a quick moment and tell you about my new channel. It's called Crafting a Healthy Life. My girl, Danielita AF, came up with the name. And it's going to be about basically my healthy life journey. It'll have motivation, tips and tricks, tons of laughter, realness, and my journey of weight loss. I'm going to leave the link down in the description box for that. I would really appreciate y'all's support on this. Um, as it's very nerve wracking doing something like that. Okay, you guys, this right here. Okay, these are a Dollar Tree. You can see they're kind of, they're kind of rough. Some of them are. And if you see them, pick them up because these are going to make the perfect tear tray signs. I mean, any sign really. So at first I thought these were gonna be like a raw wood. Well, they're not. They almost feel like plastic to me. But then as I start trying to sand off this piece of glue, I'm like, mm, I think this could possibly be what, I don't know you guys, I'm so confused on this. But anyways, they easily come apart. I'm taking this mix of antique wax and it had chiffon in it. And I think it was the wax that did this, but it gives it like that 
crackle effect because the the frame itself was like I said like a plasticky plasticky glossy like texture but I was so digging it so I just left it then taking this off um, I was just trying to take this off because it's going to be our back and I wanted just like a flat base down there. Now we're going to paint the front in plaster. It doesn't have to be smooth. Just let it be rough. It's okay if pieces are, are poking out. That's the least of our worries. Now we are going to cover up our back. For me, you guys, it's all about like, I want this to look like you bought it in a store. I don't want anybody to know. Not that I'm ashamed of it. I just want, like, I want to be proud of my work. And, you know, if somebody came up to me and was like, oh, my gosh, did you get this at Home Goods or Hobby Lobby? I'd be like, mm-hmm, yes, ma'am. Okay, so now we're going to put that back in here. Look at how clean the back looks. That's what I'm talking about here. Then taking a decal I made on my, oops, sorry about that, vinyl machine. It says Bunny Kisses. And I was either going to do this or Bunny Trail, but I thought Bunny Kisses was a little different. And this will be available in my Etsy shop for y'all. So we put that on and that is it. This was a quick, easy DIY. Absolutely love how this turned out. This will definitely be going in my tiered tray in the kitchen. And I hope you guys enjoyed these DIYs today. I really think these are some of my favorite ones that I've done so far. I don't think you guys are ready for this cuteness right here, okay? Let's get started. So I'm gonna take this sign from, it's actually a Halloween sign, but look at the shape on this thing. Like it is so pretty, I knew I had to use it. So you guys, I'm going in with black paint. Now I've done several calendar videos, I'll link them down in the description box, and a lot of subscribers kept suggesting use black. It'll cover up those numbers and the black squares that might show through the paper. Um, I've tried white. I've tried just doing it on like the brown. It does not work. The black works like a charm. So that is why I'm painting the back of this black. Then getting my calendar piece. This is from the Simply Blessed calendar. I am just going and kind of outlining where I want my page to be. That way when I take it off, I know where to place it back down. So I'm just using my jumbo glue stick. You are more than welcome to use Mod Podge or whatever you fancy, but this is what I like to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and just smooth this out here. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn this around. We're gonna go ahead and get our Arteza craft knife. I'm gonna clean this up. Y'all, this came out way better. This is like my starting point. This is like what I envisioned and then that's as far. And then it just kind of came together. Okay, anyways. So smoothing this out, then I'm gonna get a sanding block. I'm just gonna kind of try and smooth out like the rough edges here and that is done with that. So then I'm gonna go ahead and we are going to clean up our workspace with our little ladybug. Grab some um, shipping paper. And you guys know I have to cover up the backs. I do it in like every video that I use these signs. I am just cutting a piece out, hot gluing it on the back. And then we are gonna turn it around, clean it up. And now you have a fresh back. Nobody's gonna know that was a Halloween sign. And I just have to do that. Okay, now taking some boxwood. This is from Walmart. I buy it whenever I see it because it's super hit or miss. And I am just going to play around with these. I am just hot gluing them directly to my sign, trying to cover up all of that black paint. I will do the right side exactly the same way, making sure that we have an even amount on each side. I just really wanted this looking full and covering all of that black paint. So as you can see, I'm just taking little pieces here and there, hot gluing them to fill them up. And then once we are done with that, I actually was envisioning at first the rabbit wood cut out right here, see? And I was like, no, that looks so weird, the rabbit on the rabbit. So then I grab some um, blah, 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 ribbon. Now this ribbon, you guys, we are gonna cut three pieces, 14 inches long. And I got this at Hobby Lobby. And we are going to glue the ends of two of these pieces together. And I tried to do this a little slower. I do have a bow video though. And we are also going to cut a six 
inch strip as well. And this is gonna become the middle of our bow. So cut that one. You are also gonna glue the ends together so it's almost gonna look like a little like tunnel cylinder, if that makes sense. So there you go, easy peasy. Then taking our um, little dovetail over here, well, first I'm gonna fold them in half. I always fold them in half, that way I know where my middle point is and there's no guessing or lopsided bows. I'm gonna cut some dovetails, which I don't do such a great job doing that, so I have to recut them anyways. And um, then we are going to put our bow together. I use zip ties. Uh, it is like the easiest when you use zip ties. So we are gonna scrunch these bows together. Scrunchy, scrunch, scrunchy, scrunch. There you go, hold it. Then get your tail, scrunch it up into the bottom, and then that is your middle. And I'm putting that zip tie through the middle. Do not zip tie it tight yet. Fluff your bow out, see if your loops are nice and even, if it's how you like it, if you need to pull it, however you need. Once you know that your bow is exactly how you want it to look, then tighten up your zip tie and cut the back of it off. And you got yourself a beautiful bow. Look at how good that looks, y'all. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so then we're just gonna hot glue that on. And all that we have left to do is attach our twine to the top of our sign so that we can hang her up. Oh, so cute. And I just poke holes through. I'm going to, um, what you gonna call it? Put some painter's tape. It doesn't matter what tape at the ends, push that through our hole. I just double knot it on the back here so that it doesn't come through. And we're gonna do the same for the other side. And I cannot wait. Look at how beautiful this calendar page came out. All I knew was I wanted this calendar page on a sign and it just ended up coming together so beautifully. I cannot wait to display it somewhere in my home. I hope it inspires you to get those calendars out if you were fortunate enough to. All right, sorry about my voice running over my voice. It happens sometimes. Okay, so taking this ceramic, I don't know what these are called, you guys. Devil Day holders, A holder, I don't know. But I got it at the thrift store for $2.99, 50% off, so a dollar fifty. yes. Okay, so taking linen white by rust -Oleum, I already cleaned this off and everything. We are gonna go ahead and paint this girl up. I am gonna do two coats on the front and only one coat on the back. Now, y'all, if you use whites, uh, cream, or like grays a lot, I highly recommend getting the can of Rust-Oleum. I love the formula. I love that it's a little thinner than Waverly and uh, it's worth it in the long run money-wise. So this is how it looks after the second coat. I go ahead and flip it around. We're just gonna do one coat on the bottom of this just so it looks finished. You never know who's gonna look under your tray. I mean, I don't know, just better safe than sorry, right? Okay, so, and I'm just using a synthetic brush by Apple Barrel. After we're done with that, and we are going to dry that on up any day now. There we go. And then taking, so this is the planter. This looks very, familiar if you guys saw my last uh fiasco with the planter or the tray stand but this one is the the shorter and wider version okay so after you're done doing two coats on the planter I am taking my Arteza um the paint pen and I am trying to do the enamel look. Now, you guys, this is my first time ever doing this. My girlfriend, Lisa, I was asking her like, I don't know what to do with this thing. And she was like, try the enamel look on it. So I was like, you know what? I've never done it before. Let's give it a go. So I don't know how well I did. You guys let me know. So I am just going around and I'm trying to hit where I think think the natural like wear on something like this would be and I am just doing irregular shapes I am going with my curves and I do this all over and I, I just kind of like switch them out I do some horizontally vertically I I mean it's supposed to look like it's chipped away right I mean that that's what I'm thinking it's supposed to look like anyways and this is how it looks. I don't know if I did too much, if I did too little. I don't know if it looks like a cow. I mean, I don't know. I don't know, you guys. But I had to try it out. And I do like how it looks. So, okay, right here, you guys, I was learning that instead of, like, going so, I guess, precise with it, 
I'll show you right here. I started doing these like really irregular, like bringing up the chips. See how I'm like going up, down, up, down. And I thought that made it look so much more natural. So then just like we did with the other tray, I will link that down in the description box for you. I am going to apply my Dollar Tree Super Glue. It is my favorite. It's comparable to E6000 to me. And our hot glue for that immediate hold. And I was so lucky that this already had a hole and every, it was ready to go. And I actually really love the way it turned out. So I hope you guys like it. Let me know what you think of the enamel look. Like I said, it was my first time. Honest feedback is so much appreciated. And look at how cute this is. Now, my whole setup for the, these DIYs were yellow, but I didn't paint my yellow eggs yet. So uh, I definitely want to display this with yellow eggs. Um, so I need to make some more. All right, for this one, easy peasy Dollar Tree Swifty. Okay, so this is a plate from Dollar Tree. And uh, I am just going to put two coats of Rust-Oleum Linen White. Like when I put the, the thumbnail that said easy, I meant these are super easy. So we are going to just paint the front. The back is fully night. It's black. It looks good. So I'm not worried about covering the back. And you know, if it was not good on the back, I would cover it up, but we are good. So I am going to do two coats of Linen White and Rust-Oleum. And after we are done with two coats, I am going to take our antique wax and our plaid uh, mini chip brush. Y'all, if you are avid crafters, painters, you need these in your life. I will leave the link for them down in the description box. They are so inexpensive and they leave the perfect distressed effect on anything you use them on. So next we are gonna grab a bunny. This one is from Dollar General. It was $2 and it is much smaller than the Dollar Tree ones, but it is thicker. And then taking these moss sheets, moss sheets from Dollar Tree, I, well, one wouldn't fit on the whole bunny. So we're going to use two pieces here and I'm going to cap this one off right at the line of the ears. And at first I was super scared that you would see like the harsh line of them connecting, but it blends into each other so well. I was so happy with the outcome. So now I'm gonna take my scissors and we're just gonna cut around. It was really easy to cut through. Definitely pick these sheets up at Dollar Tree if you see them. And then after we're done with that, I am going to grab some Dollar Tree ribbon. I found this ribbon, oh no, never mind. First, we're gonna prop this bunny up. So the Jenga block wasn't high enough. So I grabbed these domino pieces. I'm gonna use five of them and hot glue them to each other. Sorry, I don't know what my kids are doing above me. Um, and we are gonna use this as kind of like a riser because if we didn't, we would only be putting hot glue on like the very tips of the ears and the bottom of the body. So this is going to make sure that it's attached to the plate. So um, now we are going to hot glue it, hot glue the bottom of the body. That way it's sitting on that plate rim as well. Now, taking our ribbon, I'm gonna create a finger bow, just a one loop finger bow. Again, I'll leave the uh, my bow tutorial down in the description box. Absolutely love this ribbon from Dollar Tree. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna cut that, clean it up, then we're gonna hot glue it. This is gonna be a girl bunny for us. Then taking some Dollar Tree uh, blah, 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 buttons. Okay, how many of you are like me? I will literally start with a button. There we go, that's the one I end up choosing. But I have to go through all of them first. Okay, so then I start with the second one I chose. Hot glue them on and then, okay. So you guys, I just wanted to show you really quickly. So you can stuff flowers behind this bunny. I couldn't figure out a way to hot glue it without it making looking like a hot, making it look like a hot mess. So then I found that like if you just put them more towards the bottom of the body, that you can stuff them in there, and then that way you can actually remove them if you don't want. You could change up the flowers weekly if you're not vibing the yellow anymore. So I am actually going to show you how it looks both ways if I, you know, ever want to break away from this. <laughs> okay, so here it is with the flowers. Now I like it. I like the vibrancy, but the I felt like the bunny body kind of blended in with the green of the um, 
the leaves. So maybe take the leaves off, I'm not sure. But then I'm also gonna show you how it looks without. So I like this, like I feel like it looks very farmhouse, more like modern farmhouse because of its simplicity. And I love that you can see all of the detail and the distressing. She is absolutely beautiful. Let me know what you think about this bunny girl down in the comments. Okay, you guys, this one. So this is a super easy, like cheat DIY. So I was inspired by Danielita AF. I will leave her link down in the description box for the video I was inspired by. But we are gonna take these gold eggs. I'm gonna take Maisie by Waverly and we are just going to paint four of these. Now you guys have seen me do this before so I'm, I'm not going to you know waste your time. I'll skip ahead. And we are gonna do double coats on these I am just using a paintbrush to stick my <laughs> to stick the eggs on because they do have larger holes on the bottom and it works perfectly for me every time. Now, remember guys, if you're going to take a heat gun to these babies, do not get all up on them. You have seen what happens to my eggs. They make little pregnant egg babies. It's not cute. So, word of advice, if you're going to use the heat gun on these, just make sure you hold it back pretty darn far, okay? So, so again, I'm using four for this project. I wish I would have painted more so I could have used it for the other display, but it is what it is, what it is. Okay, so let's see if I like edited, edited, edited this well because it doesn't look like it because I'm taking, okay. So now we're gonna do the speckle effect. Y'all, I know, I know you could use a toothbrush. I know that I could put a glove on, but I do not mind getting dirty in the craft room. You could easily wipe your finger, right? So remember, the more product you put on the brush, the more speckle you're going to get. The lighter product on the brush, the less speckle you're going to get. So I do that for all four. And then I'm gonna grab a mason jar from Dollar Tree and it's actually one of the really big ones that they came out with this past summer the ball jars and uh, We are going to put this together. So taking some jute cord. I'm gonna wrap this around the bottom I believe I do it around four times because it does have the words underneath ball I think it says mason jars or jar mason or I don't know what it says But I did not want to cut off the words. So I made sure that I only went up far enough to get under the first word. So we're just gonna keep on going around this mason jar. Pretty easy peasy gap. I did four strands, so finish that off. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the lid. Now make sure your lid is screwed on when you do this. That way you know where the back of the lid is. So every time you screw, take it off and screw it back on, it will be, your seam will be in the back. You know, you picking up what I'm putting down? Okay, so after that, I grab some Spanish moss. You could use whatever filler you want. Now just make sure with these eggs, since they have those big holes on the bottom, that you just position it where you can't see them. And then I'm also gonna take some reindeer moss, I think that's what it's called, and I'm gonna drop some of that in there too, just to give it like, like a little baby pop of color. And I love the way this turned out. Super, super simple, will look amazing like just on a bookshelf sitting on some vintage books on your table um in a tear tray i mean the simplicity of this is beyond amazing so thank you danielita af for the inspiration i hope you all enjoyed this video today please make sure to go down to the links and check out hank what did you do Huh? What did you do? It's light, but maybe the thickness is. That's me trying to. Uh... That's not bad. That's not bad. That's not bad. Uh, 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 uh. Full time DIY mommy.
full-time DIYer. Mommy, Adrian, Adrian, that's not a song. Um, Change up the lip color. Okay, just add a little color here. There you go. Makes it a little different. Only you know. I know. Okay. Why, mommy? No. know that fool hears me. Okay, fine. Now that doesn't make much how annoying. I wonder why it's been up in my quote. Okay, let's it's probably crooked. Just get over it. These, these glossy cheeks are reminding me of Jacqueline Hill. What do you want? Doge. Doge, 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 doge. Okay. Seriously, you know how to get outside by yourself, Hank. Let me guess. You have to go pee, right? Because I just came down here and sat down. I just got all adjusted. Finally got my straps where I wanted them. And now I got to start it all over again. Okay. Okay. Focus. Focus. Why should I just put those down? How annoying. Gosh, the clothes that I used to wear that are still hanging in my closet that I don't wear. Okay, now if we could do all of them like that. Oh, why does my nose always run? Oh, that was not a great idea. Don't, don't do that. Gotta work with what you got, right? Oh God, that's a bad idea. say thank you to all the people that stay all the way to the end to see all my boo-boos and stuff during my introductions and my second introduction. Uh, you guys are the true champions and thank you so much for supporting me all the way through my video because that really does help me out on YouTube more than you know. So for all of those that stick around to this point, I want to do a little giveaway for you. I think I'm just going to do like a bag uh, filled with hard to find items from Dollar Tree. And all you have to do is comment down below. Oh man, your favorite comedy movie. So comment that down below and you're going to get an extra added entry if you go over to my new channel crafting a healthy life and subscribe and comment on that first video that I posted so two opportunities to get entered into the giveaway and I will notify you guys let's see today is Sunday so let's say next Friday in my community tab who the winner is. You get 48 hours to uh, message me via email and it will be U.S. residents only. I'm so sorry I can't afford $50 shipping to outside of the U.S. but one day, one day I will. Okay you guys, thank you so much. Bye. Oh, look at that shirt.
been showing a lot of boobies, but it feels like I'm showing boobies. I don't know. Yeah, I got them, girl. I can't hide them, right? It just looks like so much. Gosh, when did I become such a mom? Hmm? All I saw was boob. That's all I saw. Oh yeah, I was in my 20s again. I like keep yanking this up. Mama, don't have no shame. Don't have no shame. Okay. It is what it is, right? Wow. You did that so easy. Proud of you, sis. This is even like lacy on the back and everything. <laughs> oh, hey, mom. <laughs> okay, we're out. Yeah. <laughs> wrinkle, the wrinkles. We ain't take talking about your face, girl. We were talking about the backdrop. <sighs> My face was up. I don't know what it is. What is it? Is it the hair? Here, I don't, I don't know. Dollar Tree lipstick for the win again. Dollar Tree bronzer for the win again. Okay. Hi everyone. Not hi everyone. She said that in the podcast. Don't do it. Transitional flow. It went by. Don't write music. Don't quit your day job. Okay. I just got a headache. I don't know if it's. I need more caffeine. For those of you watching, this is Friday. This video is supposed to be posted tomorrow, today that you're watching. So that's how YouTube works here. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you know what gets me? I just want all of you to know this right now. I like how now I've started talking to you on my bloopers. Uh, so as we're editing, you know, YouTubers or whatever. You guys get to see like four or five minutes of each DIY, right? Right? Okay. So my first DIY that I did, that took an hour. An hour of painting, dry time, designing the, um, my like vinyl decal, weeding it, all of that stuff took an hour. And then when I'm, I, I'm editing it, it goes down to four minutes, an hour to four minutes. Isn't that crazy? <sighs> the bunny, 25 minutes, broken down into like three minutes. <sighs> That's what I choose to do. All right, let's get on here. All right. <clears throat> Okay, maybe you like to visit thrift stores. It is the perfect time to do that right now. So you got, no, 
that's not perfect. <laughs> Seriously, 10 minutes. 10 minutes for a 15 second intro and like, How do you get so handsome? You're crazy. Where are you going, bud? You done? You done? Oh. Can you tell everyone hi? They love you. I don't know if they do, if they know how many of my chapsticks you eat. Ah! My crooked niece. <laughs> Maybe my floor's crooked. I mean, I wouldn't doubt it with this house. <laughs> it's gang Selena. I know it is. Like. my phone and I'm like my phone looks pretty even so maybe it is like the actual this mm, I think it is because look this doesn't line up with that because they're different I don't know <laughs> love when you have conversations with yourself Okay. It's gotta be a good one. A good one. People are gonna be seeing me for the first time. Gotta look all presentable. Got yourself together. Good thing this house holds because I'm sweating. I usually never sweat down here. Look, I got your own mom and everything. Girl, you're fancy because you got these big gold earrings on. Yay, yay. <laughs> okay. I really gotta figure this out because it's driving me nuts. Does it look crooked to y'all? I don't know. Okay. Oh my god, this lip color is amazing. Thank you, Dollar Tree. Y'all, because I know, I know this is going to turn into bloopers. Uh, what is it? Who, who are, who's this called? Kendra Scott. Y'all know mom's cheap. Okay. Um, on your birthday month, you can get 50% off of their jewelry and I think some other of their items. You could even do it online. You don't have to go into the store. And um, yeah, I got this one for like a previous birthday and then this one the last birthday and with like the 50% off they're like 30 bucks Ta -ting. got it okay next next piece of info what do I want to share with them one who I am um and on Tuesdays Just go with it. It's better when you just go with it. Yeah, yeah, I want those earrings to show. I don't know where these big old babies be hid. Like this one sits right here, but this one's like, I don't know, whatever, okay. <sighs> okay. I feel like with these earrings, I look so mature. I don't know why. I mean, obviously I'm mature, I'm 34. <laughs> I don't mean mature that way. I meant mature looking, you know, because I'm definitely not mature that way. Okay. All right. Stop talking to yourself and let's get on so you could get done. Okay. Right. 
Hello everyone. I hope you enjoyed that first DIY. Can you believe that's one out of 10 DIYs that I get to show you today? As you guys know, I was super excited to jump into like regular home decor, spring decor. So I'm really, really excited. Now I don't, I'm really, and I always say excited like a million times. Okay. Hi. Thanks. What are you doing out here? What are you doing? Can you see? Oh, you're so handsome. Yep. Okay, bye. You like the snow? Okay, I'll leave you alone. That's making me look like beachy, but I'm in a sweater at the beach, you know, kind of beach. Beach, 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 beach. I'm saying B-E-A-C-H, just putting it out there. You new here? Hi. That was weird. Okay, let's get it. Hi. <laughs> art that was weird hi welcome back to unicorn dust designs my name is sammy and on my channel we do diys wood signs and there is a lot of laughter so if that's something that you are into no we had it going on there if that's something you're into Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hello. Dang, that was good. <sighs> Mama, how many energy drinks you had today? Okay. Okay. honor of collabing with Kristen K. Yes. You know, like, uh, well, maybe you don't know if you're not a YouTuber. <laughs> all right, let's scrap all this. Hi, 